Historically, American voters have come to expect at least three things from political campaigns. A lot of color, a lot of noise, and the promise of lower taxes. So far this year, American voters have had a premium of all three. But last week, across seven different states, including Minnesota, both the campaign color and the campaign noise were temporarily drowned out by what the Republican National Committee called its National Tax Blitz. More than a dozen prominent Republicans sweeping through seven cities in three days, addressing crowds of reporters, business leaders, and individual citizens with the message, we want to cut your taxes. It was the perfect media event, designed to capture both local and national press attention, while allowing individual Republican candidates the chance to be seen working alongside national leaders. But the message here was more than just the standard pledge of lower taxes. It had, as its specific goal, passage of the Roth Kemp tax reduction bill, a controversial piece of legislation which would slash federal income tax rates by one-third over the next three years. The kind of dramatic action sure to capture the public's attention. Uh, what we are proposing is a cut in taxes of 10 percent per year for each of three years. Now the cumulative impact of that at the end of the three years is a 33 percent cut for everybody in America. There will be, in our opinion, no significant reduction in revenues, rather there will be an increase in revenues, not just for the family, but for governor for essential services over the coming three-year period. What it is, however, that makes the Republicans' Roth-Kemp tax cut at the same time both appealing and controversial is its sometimes stated, often implied notion that such a tax cut could be as massive as 33 percent and yet require virtually no concomitant decrease in government spending a notion which prompted former Kennedy and Johnson administration economic advisor Walter Heller to scoff that the legislation offers voters not only a free lunch, but a bonus for eating. The economic theory which provides the foundation of the massive Roth-Kemp proposal is what is popularly known as the Laffer Curve. Developed by University of Southern California economist Art Laffer, the curve purports to demonstrate that in a graph of the relationship between income tax rates and government tax revenues, there is some optimum level of taxation as yet undetermined, where the maximum possible level of government revenue is achieved. Professor Laffer's curve purports to show, quite logically, that government revenues increase as the tax rate increases until the optimum level is reached, after which higher levels of taxation actually result in less government revenues as a result of a slowdown in the economy. Laffer labels any taxation level below the optimum as the normal range, anything above as prohibitive. But the most controversial facet of Laffer's theory is the fact that he currently places the U.S. economy here, well within the prohibitive range, suggesting that a sharp tax cut now would result in freer money and thus a higher level of total government tax revenues. Among professional economists, however, Professor Laffer's curve is viewed as anything but sound fiscal theory. Some, some people have advocated um, the Kemp Roth bill, this huge tax cut on, on the order of uh, 33 percent, even though uh, they uh, admit that the economic argument behind it, the analysis behind it, is flawed. It's the California strategy that's, been fo that's being followed uh, in this, uh, so the political argument goes, in this Kemp Roth measure. The idea is to uh, sell the public on, um, on uh, a big tax uh, reduction. Uh, and the idea is then uh, the government will be forced to cut, uh, to cut its expenditures uh, later. In, sort of in general, the nature of the criticism is, uh, look, if you cut uh, taxes and don't cut government expenditures, it will be inflationary. You're not talking about cutting government expenditures. Therefore, the proposal is inflationary. But it seems to me in the background is, is among the supporters, is the expectation that government expenditures will be cut and that this is a way to get a handle on it. Perhaps not surprisingly then, many of the supporters of the Roth Kemp bill and even its co-authors disagree over the legislation's potential impact on the economy. But in a year when the fear of a tax revolt has become reality, even if the Kemp Roth bill does not end up paying for itself, many of its supporters view such a massive tax cut as an absolute necessity. When you're talking about the economy, there's risks in everything. If you're asking me, is there no risk in, in, in this policy, 
Of course there is. But there's also a major risk in doing nothing. And that's the problem. What we're trying to do, as I say, is to get the economy moving upward. Everybody hopes that it will move up enough that it will uh, create a larger pie that ultimately will mean larger revenues for, for the federal government. And so, last week's nationwide Republican tax blitz, and indeed many of this year's calls for election year tax cuts, are taking place against the backdrop of changing economic theory. Whether a tax cut as massive as 33% would result in economic prosperity or worsening inflation is a subject of hot debate even among economists. What is not under debate, however, is the fact that in any election year, but especially this one, the candidates of both parties know that they almost can't go wrong with the use of a lot of noise, a lot of color, and the promise of lower taxes. I'm Bill Hanley.